All right, so we, we are just looking at how to develop our slides and then present for our Viva. Now this could be used for degree masters or PhD. The PhD might require maybe a little more work to be done, a little more detail. Uh, in some instances for the PhD, they do maybe less than, let's say 20 slides. And then they have about 40 slides as at what appendix. The 40 slides are to answer questions that uh, will be asked by the panel, which either to the presenter could not uh, add to his presentation because they have a lim limited time to do the presentation. But what we are going to do, you have uh, 10 minutes, but you'll be asked to work within eight minutes. And then we'll have another 10 minutes for questioning. So in principle, what is going to happen is that you have 20 minutes for your section. So the 10 minutes for the presentation, you need to uh, structure your presentation in such a manner that you time yourself and you present because no one is going to interrupt your presentation. You, are, you have the control, you have done your project work. You understand the um the subject very well so you you may have to develop a strategy to highlight the key areas which i'm going to take you through so that you're able to make an impression because they score for presentation in fact this one is 20 marks for presentation take note the main thesis they are going to mark is going to take the rest of the mark i think you have academic writing that is also taking some 10 marks or so and the rest of the marks will be given to the marking what your internal supervisor and external supervisor, the marks they will give, it will be averaged, and then it will be added to the, the, the academic writing or thesis something, uh, the clinic uh, thesis clinic you did. And then this one will take the 20, I mean, percent. So this is just for 20 percent. It is mandatory that if you don't pass this, you don't pass the rest even though it's 20 percent if you don't pass you would have to come and present again so that is the 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 whole thing about this so i'm going to use this topic to illustrate what i want to uh, make you understand so this is a topic for one of the students assessing factors influencing the adoption of technology in the post in industry in the post supply chain industry in the west in in the west african sub-region a case study of integrated customs it should be custom systems so let me add that <coughs> custom systems so <coughs> this is it now if you look at this slide look at the font size this is 43 now no one is going to give you any there may be a hard rule to maintain a certain font side, but as a matter of practice, your, your topic should project well. And you see, we have the, the logo for um, GCTU. If you have the logo for Conventry, you can put it here. If you are doing another program, you can put the logo here. Your slides should be numbered. You should have numbers on your slides, okay? Number one, number two. And this is what you do when you go to uh, slides you have insert you have what slide number here and then you can say here that slide number so when you apply to all it's going to number all your slides okay as you see it here you will not see it but it's there you see the two slide two have you seen number two have you seen it yes sir there yeah you number two and then number three in that order the reason is that when you are doing a presentation and then the, the partner would want to refer you to a slide, they will mention the slide number. Do you get it? They will mention the slide number. So your slides should be numbered. And then your topic, I mean, visibly presented, it could be 43, it could be less, it could be more. The student ID, the name, the supervisor. And in some cases, you want to write the date, maybe the year. Um, here we are in 2023, just for emphasis, 2023 here. 
okay? So when you are done, <clears throat> you need to make sure that, so the first thing is that how many slides am I presenting? What do I intend to project to the audience? So in the planning stage, you might say that, okay, this is what I tell students. Um, make sure you keep it as brief as possible because this presentation. So your introduction should take maximum two slides. But I, I, I try to tell students that they scale it down to one slide, okay? In this case, this guy presented a picture and at the actual presentation, just to illustrate something. It's good when you use pictures. Uh, if you really want to tell the story, a picture can tell the story more vividly than I mean, using text. So, uh, maybe one slide, okay, maximum two slides for introduction. And then, this is introduction. He uses what? A picture here. Then the main beef is here, okay? He uses this to illustrate the port supply chain. If you're doing something, you can use this to illustrate something. And then he comes to the main introduction. And then watch, please. Watch here. The same font size is here, introduction. The same font size is here, introduction. Have you seen it? The text, the font sizes, the variations are not too much. This one is what here? This one is 24. And this one is 20. So the variation is not too much because the person wanted to pack more. But what is important is it visible, okay? So he uses two slides for the introduction to tell the story. And then he comes to the problem statement. And before that, let's go to the introduction. See, the first bullet point has reference. The second has reference and then uh, references. And the third one is the purpose of the study. It comes without a reference. This just to tell what you want to them to know. <clears throat> and we'll come to that. I'm just giving you the breakdown. So you don't need to write too much, okay? So here he gives the overview of the study and then gives some very salient process within the I mean, introduction, which is very important. And then immediately move to the purpose of the study. And then from here, he goes to the research problem. Watch something. Four points. Each point, with exception of the last point, has what? References. In fact, in the problem statement, that is where you post it. You don't make any statement without a reference. Okay. This is where you ground your problem. And if you're not very careful and you don't, adequately make statements with fact, back with references, then your problem statement, once there's no problem, there's no research. So anytime you see the panel attacking your problem statement, what, they, what is going to happen to you is that you will have ended up not doing any research. And that, that can be very dire. And it has its own dire consequences. So the advice is that your problem statement should be tight. And when I'm presenting, this part you will get to know. And then we get to the research question. See what I've done. This guy used research questions and hypothesis. Sometimes use research uh, uh, objectives and research questions. In any case, make sure you maximize what the page. So you see what I've done. I have research question and corresponding what hypothesis. Each were objective, objective and research corresponding research questions. And because this guy is using a model, he has more up to seven. So two pages for this, up to eight, of course, two pages for this. <clears throat> and then you go to more importantly, significance of the state. Now, let me, let me uh, draw your attention. For this presentation you're going to do, you don't draw so much time on the significance of the study. I mean, it's a brush through. It's very important, but you don't waste more time on it because that is, it is, the significance of the study is good, but that's not actually what you want the audience or your panel members to do. So what I tell students is this, you have 10 minutes, right? So make sure your introduction and the problem statement and the research question and the significance of the study takes only two minutes, as much as you can. 
maximum three minutes because you have eight minutes. Okay, maximum. But as much as possible, keep it two minutes. It, keep it two minutes means that the most important aspect is what you highlight. And then when you are done, you have the choice car framework. In some instances, you see choice car review. So we are coming to the literature review. Three main things. Literature review, you can have theoretical review, conceptual review, and empirical review. The theoretical review talks about a theory that underlines the study. In this case, this guy decided to bring what? Uh, uh, a framework. But you can put the theories into a table, just as this is done. Just as this one is done. That the title of the this and the theory, and then the method use, and then the findings. You can do that. Okay. But this guy decides to bring what the theoretical framework. If you have any theory and you instead of stating it in text, you want to bring it and then talk about it, that is also welcome. And then because the theory has constructs in them, they have variables in them, he decides to bring these variables and give the definition. Now, here what he's going to do, because he's not going to waste too much time, he will define one or two and then shift from this because. He's got five minutes left, right? So as much as possible, he would want to use only two minutes on the literature review and the methodology. Two minutes on the literature review and the methodology so that when it comes to the findings, I mean, conclusions and recommendation, then the rest of the minutes, because we have already used three, four, the, uh, the introduction, problem statement, and all that. I said maximum two, so let's say two. So if you use two, you are left out of eight, you are left with six. So here, if you do three minutes for theoretical, empirical review or conceptual review, in any case, if you are developing a concept in, a, in addition or a model, a personal model, then that's fine. But if you are not doing that, this one, the literature review and the methodology to capture the three minutes so that the rest of the time, the three minutes left will be used for the presentation, the discussion, and the recommendation. That is very important. So from here, theoretical review, this place, empirical review, methodology, okay? This one, two, and three, and these ones up to the theory is taken what just, I mean, three minutes. Then we come to the findings, the findings. Now this was not necessary, but the guy decides to come uh, to bring it. Why is it not necessary? Because it doesn't address any objective. This is just description, giving descriptive what statistics. That's what it does. So my advice here is that when it comes to the results, you bring each research question, once you bring the research question, you bring what? The result that comes with it. And I, I, I want to show you something like that. <clears throat> um, if I can find. Uh, okay. If I can find that. So let me switch to this and draw your attention to. Okay, so this is another presentation. And what I was saying about the, so watch here, you see the results. He brings research question one and then states the research question and then bring the results under it. Because he's using this like scale, it was important to explain, bring this one here to explain. This means disagree and all that gives the every table is given what a table i mean number a table eight field and then i mean here the guy what it does here is that the literature that confirms the study is what he's brought here okay so <clears throat> let me take you through this as well so you look at this guy okay uh, this is a phd thesis he gives an outline this fits well anyway the introduction, you see, one page, everything is here. Every statement comes with what? Some sort of reference. That's what he has done here. We have five points here. 
And then you go to motivation of the study because it was a PhD, you need to do motivation. You don't need this at the master's level, okay? What you need is significance of the study, which I've shown to you. But problem statement, one what? One page, watch, problem statement, one page. Each point has what? A reference. Each point has what? A reference, okay? Because that's problem statement. And the last one is where he established the gap he wants to, I mean, fill. And then you have research questions. This guy decided to use one page for research question and one, one page for also hypothesis. It's needless, you can do that on one page. And then look at what he did. This was what I was ta talking to you about, the theoretical review. So he brings the theory, the alter, the gaps, and the improvement. You don't need to bring the gap. You can talk about the, the, uh, the work review, the theory, the alter, then the implication of the theory to the work. So you would have said that if you're using resource-based view theory, you have said that the resource-based view theory, it talks about how organizations are able to use their resources to maximize productivity to achieve competitive advantage. For the purpose of this study, the study is I mean, in the area of X, Y, Z, and the resource-based view aligns with this because most of the, the variables in the conceptual framework are elicited or are taken from this resource-based view, and which is why the, the theory is revealed here. I mean, you are just talking about how the implication of the theory on the study, okay? So you can do that, right? So state the theory, bring the author, and then just, you can collapse this and just bring one implication. How does the theory align to the study? Why are you using the theory? So here you just talk about the, the, the theoretical review, you just mention them briefly and then you move along. So he used this institutional, he used three theories. You don't need to use three theories, okay? He used three theories. One theory is okay. Once it explains the topic very well, you are good to go. Then he has his empirical review. And this one I see. See, in your empirical review, pick one of the objectives. Watch, you pick one of the objectives for research question. You pick one paper that aligns with it. In fact, you should make sure that this paper that you have picked, it's the same paper you use to confirm the literature in chapter four when you are doing your discussion. And I'll show you that. When you are saying that this findings corroborate or confirms this, make sure it's the same paper you're using in the literature. Okay. So here you talk about the work review artists. You don't need a gap. Just talk about findings. That is all. Findings. What do you found? All right. Because the gap has been established in the problem statement already. So you don't need that, I mean, here. Here, they brought a gap, and then they say, how can your study improve, I mean, that. The same thing, he reviewed a lot of papers. You need, if your objective is three, use three papers. If your objective is, uh, you have four objectives, use four papers, each one for each objective or research question, and you, you are good to go, okay? So he did that, and then when you come to the methodology, you see methodology is like uh, two pages. So research approach, what is it? Mixed method, research design, descriptive, research paradigm. So that's what you'll be talking about. Straight, straight, population, three selected procurement depart, uh, uh, department of three top institutions. I mean, 100, that was, I mean, what is some, is a quantitative 98 based on research advisors and qualities. He did a mixed study and stated emphatically. And then say sampling technique, he used random sampling and purposive sampling. Random sampling for the qualitative, uh, quantitative part, and then the purposive for the qualitative part. So I was just trying to make you understand from another perspective how this, and then here, result, he brings question, uh, research question one. And that's why I'm saying that this one where the guy brought this descriptive was because of the time, it is not necessary. You don't need to bring this one here. Okay, it is, I mean, no one, we don't care about the demography. We are interested in, it is good when you're reading the entire work, just to give some sort of description of how the demographic uh, uh, analysis is like, how many men, the women, and uh, who, and those educated, it, it, it adds some sort of validity 
uh, and authenticity to the, the findings that you have. But that's not what it doesn't address any specific research question. So we are not too much interested in that. So you see, um, like I was saying, research question one objective. So if you are doing four objectives or four research questions for each of the results, bring the research question and bring the result that comes under the research question. And then watch here, very important. This is what I was saying was the literature you reviewed, what you brought in here, the empirical review, especially. Okay, this empirical review. This same papers is what you should use to confirm because it should be able to confirm the findings or otherwise. Okay, so after saying that, okay, so for this result, we are looking at uh, to what extent does compliance, non compliance affect value for money in uh, uh, public procurement delivery? And the guy would have said that, okay, so for political interference, we had a mean of 4.6. Now, the scale has been given here, strongly agree, disagree to. And neutral three and four on and, and all that. So for political interference, we're having most of the members agreeing. Same was said of media, uh, uh, same was said of professionalism, same was said of for effective monitoring. You see, I've skipped. Okay. For the others, some were neutral. And but this finding is consistent with the the what Victor, I mean, said in 2015 that public procurement, uh, political interference, uh, something, something, then you are, this is based on the knowledge you have in the study, okay? The, the, uh, it's also consistent with Ameyao. Some people might just say that, okay, the findings is consistent with the studies of Victor 2015, Ameyao 2012, and Zodek 2011. He's done, then move to the next one. You understand? He says it's consistent with it because it's just presentation. So you go to research question two, you talk about it, you tell us that the results is consistent with what Atinga and uh, Azarugu 20, uh, 2003 and then Egbert 2015, Roxanne 20, and then you are good to go. But mention one of them, okay? You can talk about political interference because this one is agree, this one is agree, and then this one is also agree. You want to highlight on that. And then those that are neutral, I mean, it doesn't, even though they are important, they are not too relevant to your findings, so you don't want to. Research question three, the same thing. And then research question four, the same thing. This guy did what we call a mixed study. So this is what he did. So for those doing qualitative work, you need to bring some of the responses in your presentation. And that's what he did, okay? So he brought it in quotes, in quotation. Qualitative study, that's what it is. And he brought a question, giving the necessary motivation in the form of results, incentive training and good environment and blah, blah, blah. He says that he asked the question and then this was the response of the person. Then he is saying that this response is consistent with this work. It do say Awunyo and Victor and the UDP 2010 and Alhassan 2018. This is consistent, I mean, with it. And then for the PAD, at the end of the day, he was building a model, so he needed to bring the original contribution, what his study has contributed to the work. If you're doing something like that, you can do the same thing. Bring the model to show that, okay, which ones predicted, which ones did not predict, okay? Then he comes to what? The conclusion. So we have the conclusion here, okay? So for the conclusion, he was dealing with what? Object. For the findings, he was dealing with research questions. Take notes. The findings, he was aligning them under the research question. But for conclusion, we have concluded, and let me say this, the reason why we set objectives in research is that we set the milestones to achieve. So when we have done the work, when we have raised questions through the uh, uh, designing of a uh, questionnaire or interview guide, and they have answered and we have discussed, we need to come here and conclude and make sure that the objective that we set Either we have achieved it or not. And that's why in the conclusion, you bring the objectives rather than the research question. This guy believes that the objective one to three was achieved in a certain manner. They were all together. So he, he brought it together. Is that to find out the effect of non-compliance, blah, blah, blah. Then he talks about the conclusion. Very straightforward and emphatic. 
political interference and familiarity with rules and regulation had a significant negative impact on the three predictors, value for money, fairness, and transparency. That is what the study concluded. After using the literature to confirm it, that is what the researcher concluded. He said professionalism and effective monitoring had a positive significant impact on three predictors. That is what it con uh, concluded. Media publicity had a moderate positive. That is the conclusion. And what it means is that the objective that is set, then we need to find out whether we achieve it or not. So the conclusion makes things very easy for you. Then you come to what? The objective four, also the conclusion. Objective in that order, objective five, conclusion, then the recommendation. Okay. And then the recommendation, you are very emphatic. You have diagnosed the, the problem. Now you need to administer the medication. Put it that way so that you can understand. So in, in administering uh, medication, you are very straightforward upfront and you make sure that you give the instructions and the things that you think they should do based on what you found. Then you can recommend that one. The recommendation you can give two or three, four, five, it depends on the number of findings that you had. Some of the findings are all together. So you can have one recommendation to them. Then some people give two, three, and it's accepted. Then at the end of the day, you make sure all your references are also intact. Then when you are done, please, your last slide should be thank you slide. Just be very kind with the, um, those who, the, the panel members. So let, let's, let's come here. I just wanted to walk you through. I think the other slide works well. So for this, like I told you, the guy is doing something about um, um, technology, set factors influ influencing the adoption of what technology in the port supply chain system. So you would have said that, okay, um, my name is David Ken Boyson. Um, um, I'm working on the topic assessing factors influencing the adoption of technology in the port supply chain industry in the West African subregion, a case study of integrated custom system. My name is blah, blah, blah. This is my supervisor. Then you move on. Now, this is the outline. We're going to go through introduction, problem statement, true to implication of the study theory practice, and we'll, we'll conclude with the conclusions, recommendation, limitations, and references. Then you move to, you see how I'm cutting the thing short. So he comes to the introduction and he wants to talk about, give a brief. You don't waste time here. It's possible you can use 30 seconds here, okay? He wants to talk about a description of the port supply chain. So in the port supply chain, you have the supplier at the port of load where cargo is moved through the high seas till it gets to the customer. And customs play a significant role in that the world the 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 ontag has said or review transport uh, uh, paper has said that 80 percent of cargo is carried by sea you move here now you are going to talk about this now what i want you not to do is to read the i mean slides don't don't read don't read if you read, we can all read. And it's annoying for the uh, guys to, that is the panel to be there and you to be reading. Yeah, he's saying that today we live in a rapid changing globalized world in the technical progress uh, has facilitated the cross border free flow of commodities and labor. So you can say that according to Joha 2020, you understand, there, there is a rapid changing I mean, globalized world. And that is facilitating cross-border free flow of commodities and services and capital, and as well as labor. When you put it this way, they wouldn't see that you have read. You understand? So you have paraphrased what you are saying. It is important that you do that. Okay, I've seen a hand up. Let, let me finish, just write your questions down. Let me finish so that you get a proper guidance to that. So this is what you do, you don't read, you paraphrase. When you have done what you what, when you have done the paraphrasing, you get to the third one. That one you are talking about the purpose of the study. You can read the purpose of the study to assess specific factors that affect the adoption of technology 
in the port supply chain. You put a picture here. So if you're talking, you put it there for a reason. You have to relate it to the picture. If you have said something about the rapid changing something, something, okay? Once you have talked about that, relate it to the picture that you have. You can't just put a picture there without commenting about it. Then you come to the problem statement where you are restating the problem. Now, it is very important that your last point will tell the gap that this study seeks to fill. If that is not clearly stated, you have a problem. If you look at this problem statement, the guy says several technologies has been deployed in customer push over the past three decades, okay? Automatic uh, systems for custom data, Ascuda, I'm drawing your attention to it. If I'm doing presentation, I will not read. I'm drawing your attention to it. So Ghana single window, and currently the GIF, uh, the icons, and that is according, according to the GIF report. I would have said that according to the GIF report, there seems to be several technology that have been deployed over the period of, uh, the, over the three decades. And examples of these are the, the Ghana national window, the GC net, and the Ascuda. I've said the same thing in a different way. So they wouldn't see that I've, 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 I've uh, read. Then it goes on to say several technologies components like the several technology component like the blockchain smart contract among others have in, been implemented across the, the 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 industry, including the maritime port industry. Then he brings all the references. This is very very important. So you can say that according to AK uh, Mahabuba, you understand, uh, and others, okay, there are several technologies, uh, smart contracts, blockchain, that has been deployed over the period in the port and maritime industry. Now, here, he's going to establish the literature gap now. Now, look at this. He said the broad technological adoption factors of integrated custom management system in the port supply chain industry. Using the UTAT two, using the UTAT two, using the, the UTAT two, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a gap missing in literature. He has hit on the, the gap straight. Okay, and he, he says that all this paper says that that is missing. So, why? What do you want to do? So, he say to address this gap in this work or in the work from a theoretical and empirical standpoint, we pose the following broad question. What are the factors? So you see, the topic now becomes a question that you are going to ask. What are the factors? Uh, what factors influence the adoption of integrated custom management system in custom operations in Ghana? So the, 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 the research is going to answer this question. Let's see how the other paper stated, the, the other presentation stated this one. He, he put it in another way, just for variety. <clears throat> so that's what he said, okay? After, okay, this, this is the motivation of the study. Okay, research problem. Is that the daily graphic this year, in this year's streams, the caption, blah, blah, blah. Now here, there is a literature gap specifically on compliance and non-compliance issues. That is political interference and blah, 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 blah. And therefore the need for the study, okay? But he makes some statement of infractions on the Public Procurement Act, okay? And that has necessitated the need for this study, okay? So look at this. This the last point will have to establish what the gap. That is very, very important. You, you guys need to take note of that. So, so that is it. Then we go to the research questions and hypothesis. In some cases, you have what? The objectives and the research question, objective or hypothesis. What do you do here? You say, okay, um, the, the, the study had the following research questions and the corresponding hypothesis. So research question one, to what extent does performance expectancy influence port users Review our intentions to adopt the technology in a custom operation system in Ghana. And the corresponding hypothesis that is that there is a statistically significant correlation between performance, expectancy, 
and port users intention to adopt technology in custom operations in Ghana. And the other questions also follow same. You skip the significance of the study. The study is significant because one, what does it do? It, it was going to help the custom operate uh, custom as uh, in the port or improve their system in terms of their uh, the their the, the IT systems. Two, the significance of the study talks about three things. The case study or organization, how does this study improve their, their system? So you talk about it. The second one talks about what? How policy, I mean, makers or policy framers are going to benefit, I mean, from this, okay? And the third one is that the addition of, I mean, uh, extra literature to the body of knowledge. So you can just, I mean, talk about this. In some cases, if you see their time is moving, uh, very fast, you can skip this. It's not too important. This one is a picture, theoretical framework. Now, if I were the person who is going to present this, I will talk briefly about this theory, but will not do this definition because this is a lot. So I'll use more time to talk about performance expenditure, what is the, it is, effort, social influence, facilitating condition up to habit, and the, media, the, the moderating role of what? Age in moderating the relationship between the predictor factors and behavior intentions, which is what the in, uh, dependent variable. Then this model is by what Van, uh, Van Katash uh, tell 20. Then I say that these are the, the operational definitions of the construct. You don't need to use your time to define it. Let the, uh, the, the five guys, that let the panel ask you questions and you take them there. If they ask you, how did you operationalize it? Then you take them here because that time is their time that they're using for the uh, study. Then when you come to the empirical review, take note, as I said, you see, I brought three what papers, just three papers. One was what a regression, the theory and the method use regression. The other one use what interviews and this one quantitative approach. How am I going to deal with this? I will say that, okay, the study reviewed Evidential was studies, empirical studies that are that were able to address the research questions and the hypothesis. One, the number of papers were reviewed, but the, uh, most of the critical ones that align to the study are the works of uh, Chala, Chaladan, uh, 2020, who I mean conducted a study on on information and that carves customs what fraud. Now they used. A regression model and their findings show that better information helps curb customs fraud, but its, its effectiveness appears compromised by what corruption. And then the work of ADO 2021, which is a qualitative, I mean, they use a qualitative approach, I mean, to in, in relation to inf information uh, technology and, gov uh, and, and governance, government corruption, also found that uh, localized information system. Uh, implementation helps transform the government administration. Um, the work of point they tell also talk about blockchain ready, I mean, port users. I will not waste time to talk about the rest. Then I come to the methodology and I say that, okay, this is the research methodology. The research approach was quantitative, non experimental correlation. This you can read it. You don't need to paraphrase. You read it straight, population of the study, and you read it very fast, okay? because you want to beat down time. Population of the study, 80% uh, of adult population who are in the working class, that is the population. And he states, most of you do not state the actual population. For qualitative study, you are not too much uh, required to state the population, but you have an idea the, the what you have in mind, okay? There is a population, you can state it. Then out of that, you have your, you don't need, let me put it this way. You don't need statistical, method to derive the sample size from for qualitative or for quantitative you need to do that because you want to generalize the findings and you want to make sure that the population and the sample that that you picked and uh, the sample represents what the population sampling size you talk about it you said he chose nine horses which is larger than larger than that of the comparable research by these guys sampling technique online survey through google forms and after presenting a, a presentation analysis, he used principal component analysis and structural equation model. Ethical issues 
members were informed there was a form, informed consent, we, we talked about it. The, the school gave you a letter and you administered this letter to the organization and they gave you the, the clearance to talk to or administer the questionnaire. So res respondents were not coerced in any way and uh, confidential confidentiality was the hallmark of this study. Reliability and validity, use Chromebook Alpha for reliability and constant value. I don't know what you use for validity and reliability. This one, don't put it in your work. Skip descriptives. And I think I've taken you through Dr. Noble's own where he brought research question and then brought the findings over there. This one was dealing purely with hypothesis, okay? So it was difficult to do that. So that, this is not cast in concrete, but you make sure that you are able to drum home what you are expecting to what achieve based on your research objective or research questions. So here he comes with what? Issues of what? This is a purely quantitative study. So he comes with issues of what? Validity and reliability. He talks about the construct, the KMO, Kaiser Mayer, Oakland test. He talks about Butler test of sphericity, what it is, total variance explained. You don't need to worry yourself and talk about all these things. If you are using something like I think Monica, your work will be also based on something like this. If you get to this place, okay, and you look at your variables, focus on Krobank Alpha, this one, okay, and AVG, average variance extracted. Now, the AVG threshold is 0 0.5, okay? If you, you get 0 0.5 and above, it means that your, your work is, the construct is valid. Chromebook Alpha is 0 0.7 and above, all right? So that is, these are the factors. These are the things you look for, AVG and Chromebook Alpha. You can skip KMO, you can speak, uh, skip Butler test of sphericity, uh, spheric, uh, sphericity, you can speak them. Because these ones also, they, they are, they, they help measure the sample adequacy, okay? You don't want to get into that. I'm saying that this is just for presentation. It doesn't mean that you don't need, you, you don't need to learn so that when they ask you a question, you, you can answer. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that for the presentation, don't go explaining this thing to them. Let them ask you questions so, so that, and don't try to raise questions in your mind and think that you have to spend time to answer them so that they will not ask you. They will still ask you. All the things that you have said, they will still ask you and they want you to respond. Because if they don't have any question for you, they can't look at you like that and allow you to go. They will still ask you, I mean, some questions. So it talks about validity. These are all validity. This is about goodness of fit, uh, of, of, of fitness to a test. That gives a certain threshold for the construct. The, uh, if your data has uh, a fit, the model, then we say there's a good fit. Uh, goodness of it doesn't mean uh, that it's not a caveat to measure whether a model uh, a model is good or not but it, it gives some sort of robustness and rigorosity with how you deal with your the process of what uh, ensuring validity and reliability so most people will like that uh, so you see what he does here now he bring research question one two three four five six seven have you seen it and he's saying that all these research question this thing answers it so Performance expectancy to BI, the coefficient is what, 26%, this is 0.2%. It is significant. So this is what you look at. Monica, for your work, this one is significant. This one is not. This one is not significant. So those ones that have, have less, those ones that have less than, I mean, five, they are significant. The rest are not significant. I know you've not gotten the things that you need, Monica, but I'm drawing your attention to it. If no, you see no, a table. The screen is not there. Like, we are, for me, I'm still seeing research problem. I'm not seeing the current. Oh, there. my goodness. Is yes, that... that's what I was trying to alert you, but you muted oh, me. So, so you are seeing it now? Yes. Oh, my goodness. So I was talking about. So all these things I said, and I understand, okay. I'm sorry about this. 
So I talked about, um, but I, I think they are still relevant, okay? What I said, they are still relevant. It's just that you didn't see the screen. I was walking you through the screen. I showed you the first screen, which I think uh, for those who are not using any model and all that, that works for them very well in terms of how the guy has structured uh, the problem statement and all that. This problem statement is also well structured. Four points, three points has all the references. The last point is, is giving you the, the, the purpose, the gap that you intend to fill I mean, in literature, okay. Ah, okay, they were sending me uh, messages that they can't see the presentation, okay. All right. So, you can see now? Yes, sir. Yes, do. So, I was talking about the problem statement. Let me go back. And I said that as much as possible, you don't read. So I, I use this as an example. I would have said that according to the Give Report 2009, um, over the past decade, three decades, I mean, customs uh, have deployed a number of systems. An example is the ASCUDA, the GCNet, and the single window. Do you get what I've seen? You see what I've done? You see what I've done? I've stated the same thing. Okay? But in a manner that you wouldn't know that I read. And this is very, very important. I could have also said here that, okay, uh, where you say several technologies, component like blockchain, smart, I have been the implement across uh, industry, including maritime and port, I would have said that according to, to AK Mahabuba and others, okay, 2020, okay, there are a number of technologies, uh, smart contract, blockchain, among others, that has been deployed in the port industry over some period, okay. And then here, the last one, it talks about the broad adoption factors of integrated custom management system in post supply chain indoor using what? The UTAC 2. It's a gap missing in, 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 uh, in what? Literature. I would say that according to the works of Lay 2020, Poison and others, it appears that the broad adoption factors, okay, is missing, okay, in literature relating to the custom management systems in the port. Okay, it's missing. It's missing. So the current study seeks to look at this work from a theoretical and empirical uh, point of view by answering this question, that what, uh, what factors influence the adoption of integrated custom system in custom operations in Ghana? I've stated a problem statement in a way not reading. And the mastery at this stage is very important. The other difficult thing is that you are doing this thing within some limited time. So what you need to do is that from today, from today or from tomorrow, you need to be doing rehearsal and be timing yourself. Okay? That is very, very important. And I did say that here, you don't talk too much. You talk about one of the research questions and the hypothesis, and then you skip, okay? You talk about the significance of the study. I, I, I highlighted on that. So three things to look at, significance of the study. Two, the case study organization, how it drives policy, and how it also improves the existing literature, adding additional literature. These three things, you talk about them, and then you are good to go. Joyce Carfield, but I did indicate that. You can just, because this guy has constructs here to talk about them, he will spend some few minutes, about 30 seconds, to talk about, I mean, the predictors, that is performance, expectancy, effort, social influence, facilitating condition, economic form, price value, and habit, and how these will be predicting behavior intention, moderated by what age. And that is 
the framework for Ben Katash and 2012, Etel 2012. And these are the operational definitions of the construct as you see on the screen. Uh, the empirical review talks have, we look at three main papers that related to the study and answers the research question. So the work of Charlotte and, uh, and, and others, 2020, looked at um, the, how information can curb custom what fraud, the, the use regression model, and we, oh, the, the findings show that better information helps curb what custom fraud, um, but its effectiveness appears compromised. The work of Poison Etel also dealt with um, flow chain ready port supply chain using distributed uh, ledger. And with a quantitative qualitative approach, the authors found that um, the, you see, I'm moving to the findings to look at a very good summary I can make. I'm doing this as tempo, but for you, you would have written this thing down, okay? So that when you get there, you just read it. Then it's easy, I mean, for you. Then here you read it to them. Okay, research approach, quantitative, non-experimental, correlational design. They are going to ask you, what is it? What is non-experimental, correlational design? So you need to get these answers when they ask you the adventure. They want to know if you understand. Population is what? The, the, the study used 80% of the population. Now take note that if you are doing a quantitative study, you need to justify, you need to, set, you need to establish your population. Whether the population was targeted, when I say targeted, it means that maybe you wanted to look at uh, working class. Your target is those between 18 and 35. So that is a target population, okay? It is accepted because you are not looking at the entire population. Based on that target population, for if for quantitative, you have to statistically generate the sample size because the sample size is used to generalize what the result. If you don't do that, then it means that uh, your that, that there's some sort of subjectivity in your sampling and which will not pass for the paradigm for quantitative study. So it's important, and you bring your sampling size and then you justify which study or which reference that support what you're saying. And this one, he brought the references and it says sampling technique, he used online survey through Google Forms and data presentation and analysis. He used principal component analysis and structure equation modeling, ethical co co uh, issues, informed consent and confidentiality. Respondents were not coerced. Reliability, combat alpha, validity, construct validity. He's done. And I said that avoid this page. Descriptive statistics is not needed here. It doesn't answer any research question. Here, because it's more of a model that was being used, a theoretical model, he needed to do some sort of statistics to establish validity and reliability. So here, I did indicate that don't worry yourself about everything here. For those who are doing something like this, focus on the average variance extracted. The threshold is 0 0.5. When you meet that threshold, it means that you have some level of valid construct. It means that the instrument that was used to measure that data measured what it was supposed to measure. That is validity. So average variance extracted, and then you look at what Kronbach Alpha, that set a threshold to uh, uh, up to uh, 0 0.75 and what above. In fact, that is the threshold, 0 0.75 or above, when you meet that, it means that there is internal consistency in the, the, the responses that you got from the respondents. So the factor loadings and other things, you don't talk about them, but this shows the panel that you've done some, some substantial what work, okay? And the goodness of fit for those who do quantitative, who do structural equation modeling, they will do goodness of fit, uh, fit test. This actually, shows uh, the level of fit. Now we have this one, the Ramsey, that talks about fitness of, I mean, less than 0 0.05. So you see that this is not fitting, but the two, this one, the threshold is greater than 0 0.95. This one is fitting. This one is also what's fitting. So the comparative uh, fit index, the TFI, and the Tekka-Lewis index, I mean, 
all fitted. The others did not fit. Okay. But it doesn't mean anything. Okay, so, so that is it. And then you go to, now look at what this guy did. He brought a research question, research question one, two, three, I mean four, it said three, uh, four, five, then seven. I think there's a mistake somewhere here. There's four, five, six, and seven. Okay. And here, for those using hypothesis on all that, your main concern should be this one and then the significance level. That should be your main concern. So for this one, performance expectancy predicting BI, the impact is 26% and it's significant. This one, the impact is 45% is significant. This one, the impact is 2.2, uh, .2, okay? I think this, this also should be an error. It's not 2.2, it should be 0 0.2, right? And then it is not significant. This one is also not significant, but HD is significant and it's what 51%. So you would have said in the analysis that Performance expectancy, that's the PE, um, effort and habits. I mean, we're able to predict the real intention of what um, the users to adopt technology. And this is consistent with the work of what the uh, Tamil, Tamil Mani 2020 and Wiggy 20, uh, 2018, um, and also the work of Utara 2017, and then Chen and Wing. 2020 and 2017 res respectively. You are done with, so for the guy, all this part talks about his analysis. The next thing is to go to the conclusions, okay? And the conclusions, just as we did in the case of Noble's work, is the same thing here. Here he's stating the variable and he's concluding on it, a significant positive relationship between performance expectancy and BI was on earth in the career study. And he brings the what? The findings in that then research question two the same thing and then research question seven okay the other research questions did not predict so this is what he concluded and then you come to what the uh, other conclusions those predictors that did not predict SI, social influence, these are all predictors that did not predict. Your study might not be like that. What you saw with the conclusion, what you did with the conclusion, and in fact, what you set out to do here, you stated those ones that were able to predict, you bring them. If yours is not about prediction and it's about what Dr. Noble did, and let me show his work, then you would have said, this is what Dr. Noble said, uh, did. You would have said in the conclusion, you see, this is what he said, objective one, research objective one uh, to three. Then he set out his conclusion, bullets the point, goes to objective four, bullets the point, and objective four and objective five, bullets the point. And then he goes to the recommendation. One page, he is done. It. I mean, there's another one, of course. So this one and this one, he's done and his reference. So what I've done is just to give you some sort of uh, insight on what you expected. Now, one other thing I need to draw your attention to, there are questions that will be asked. The first question that will be asked, may be asked, relates to the topic that what are you studying? They will actually tell me a little bit of what you want to achieve with this study. What are you studying? What motivated you to do that? That question will come. Right? And then the question on the problem statement. 
right? What gap in literature did you see? What did you seek to do? I mean, with the gap that you have added. When they say, what did you seek to do? That you go to your objective because the objective is going to address or research person is going to address that. But here you need to tell the story without even the references you see there. You need to tell the story, I mean, in its raw form. For instance, this guy was talking about, I mean, the infractions on the procurement, public procurement what act, okay? And that has necessitated the need for this study to be conducted and to see whether, I mean, we, we, we conceptualize, he said, I conceptualize, I mean, a framework to test to see whether the variables like compliance and then other ones, familiarity with rules and professionalism really predict uh, public procurement delivery. That's what he wanted to do, brief. At this stage, we, are not, we don't want statistics. Just brief, what did you, what did you see as a problem? And how is literature supporting that problem? Because any problem, that's why we bring the literature here. Any problem you state, you should be able to state in literature I mean, what supports what's the problem? So an example, if I go here, um, the problem statement and I'm stating something, okay? I should be able to give evidence. And this one, these are the evidence, okay? Here you say there are several uh, technological components like blockchain that has been deployed. Where? In the port industry. Who said that? These are the guys who said it, okay? And you say the broader uh, uh, adoption, uh, adoption factors of integrated customer management system in the forcing industry is, is using your touch, it's missing in literature. Who said that? These studies have indicated that we don't have this specific, because these studies relate to the port industry. They never talked about what? The integrated customer management system, okay? So it is a gap and you want to use this framework to explain that, okay? So these things are very, very, so a problem, a question will be asked on the problem statement. They will critique your research question or objective if it's not well stated, right? Any critique they give you, or any feedback, you don't defend. If you see that you cannot explain, you say that, okay, I've, take, I've taken note of it and I'll, I'll, I'll use this. Your, your, so then you ask that, I've taken notes. So say, what do you suggest? That's how you go about it. What do you suggest? Then you 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 take your pen and a paper and whatever he suggested, then you write, I just want your suggestion so that I can improve on the work. And when you are like that, it makes life easy for all of us. Okay, because you are not just defending the, the indefensible. So just take note of that. I, I just want to pause here and, and ask some questions. If you have any question, you can ask. Go ahead if you have any questions. 